This presentation will address the flight operations plan for the Orbiting Solar Laboratory, OSL. It will describe utilization of the NASA ground system and control the observatory pointing from instrument or workstations during a typical science campaign. The OSL will be creating high-resolution motion pictures of the dynamic activities on the sun's surface and in the overlying chronosphere. Digitizing this data for real-time transmission to the ground requires a relatively high data rate of 16 megabits per second. In comparison, other solar imaging satellites like SMM took still photos, stored them on board, and transmitted them later at about 32 kilobits per second or less. However, the Landsat satellites take even higher resolution still photos of the Earth and transmit them in real time at 85 megabits per second. But the total data required for Landsat is lower than for OSL because Landsat takes individual scenes only while OSL takes movies. In both cases, there is too much data for a nominal onboard storage device. TDRS is the only way to get real-time data rate telemetry from a low polar orbiting satellite like Landsat or OSL. TDRS must point its high-gain antennas at these satellites whenever their science data is to be collected. Therefore, availability of the TDRS single access K-band, KSA, links will limit the amount of science data that OSL transmits. Typically, TDRS has authorized from four to eight hours per day on their KSA links as long as it's at their convenience. For OSL, this is no problem since OSL will see the sun 100% of the time and will see at least one TDRS satellite 97% of the time. During these real-time telemetry sessions, data from OSL is received at the Data Capture Facility, DCF, at the Goddard Space Flight Center. All raw data is recorded on high-density digital recorders. It is processed to level zero and forwarded to the Science Operations Facility, SOF, in near enough real-time. Because the OSL is using NASA's standard telepacketization formats and protocols, the NASA Communications Network can easily handle it within their institutional ground system capabilities. This data output from the DCF is easily converted into viewable movies by the instrument or workstations and the entire communications link is transparent. In addition, the DCF recorded data is eventually sent to the Goddard Science Data Processing Facility for offline bulk data processing, distribution to the scientists, and archiving. The Project Operations Control Center, POC, located at Goddard, will handle all flight operations. This requires only an S-band link through TDRS. During science data collection times, a single access system is available, but otherwise, a low-gain multiple access system is sufficient. Whenever OSL is not collecting real-time science data, the POC is responsible for routine maintenance and housekeeping. It must ensure that the observatory stays pointing nominally at the sun to keep the solar arrays lit. Even when the scientists are controlling the observatory pointing, the POC has inline control over any uplinked commands and it prevents any hazardous commands. OSL will be available for real-time science campaigns during nine months each year at pre-planned TDRS observation windows. A typical campaign is planned by the scientists based on inputs from other solar observatories and requests from the OSL scientists and the solar physics community. The SOF coordinates these inputs and dictates the campaign scenario. It is possible to conduct retargeting and near real-time science data processing operations from the SOF. A typical science observation campaign first requires a course pointing of the OSL to a new location on the sun. The initial course pointing can be done with the low-rate multiple access TDRS communications links before the high-gain TDRS antennas are scheduled for OSL. In the SOF, the scientists have full sun images from ground-based observatories displayed on their workstations. 
The yellow disc shown here represents this image. The real full sun image will indicate which local feature on the sun is currently being viewed by the OSL and the location of the new feature to be targeted. Using a mouse, the operator positions his display window over the new location and initiates a command to move the OSL. In addition, the OSL must be rotated to align the OSL cameras properly for this feature. This is also done by rotating the display window and initiating a command to the OSL. The POC must approve all commands before it uplinks them. Then the OSL will begin to reorient itself as directed. The only data received to verify this course pointing is found in the spacecraft housekeeping telemetry that is received through multiple access TDRS by the POC. Now, the scientists wait for the pre-scheduled TDRS high data rate link. Once TDRS points its high gain antenna towards OSL, the ongoing science data is relayed to the DCF and forwarded to the SOF, where it is viewed as a movie. The workstation display is replaced by this near real-time OSL data, which is a very high resolution blow-up of a small area on the sun. Within this blow-up, the scientists can exactly locate the feature of interest and do the necessary fine pointing. Again, he moves his display window across the image and rotates it as necessary. He initiates the appropriate command request and the POC screens it and uplinks it if valid. This time, the image displayed on the workstation will update as the OSL moves and the scientists can verify the new pointing in near enough real time. Once satisfied, he can set the OSL auto track system by another standard workstation generated command. OSL will now recognize the feature in its field of view and track it even as it changes and moves. Since there are no eclipses, OSL never loses the target and it will track it even after Tedris breaks contact. Hours or days later, when Tedris resumes real-time science data, the feature is still centered in the OSL field of view and once again displayed on the workstation. Scientists are thus able to more easily interpolate the missing data because they know that this is the same feature. In addition to auto tracking, the OSL has image stabilization systems on each of its instruments. These systems remove any jitter in the data caused by random vibrations of the observatory that might be caused by the stirrable antennas or the reaction wheels in the attitude control subsystem. This capability is demonstrated by these before and after pictures taken of the sun using this image stabilization system at a ground-based observatory. The jitter was introduced mechanically to simulate onboard vibrations of various frequencies and has been totally removed. Notice that the data quality is degraded by the atmospheric distortions as it is with all ground-based observations. Because of these state-of-the-art capabilities provided by the OSL in this continuous sunlit orbit, the scientist will also be able to conduct some near real-time science data processing from his workstation as he views the data. He can select various filters, for example, to emphasize the events of most interest and quickly evaluate his decision. In this way, he can ensure that the data being collected back at the DCF is just what he needs. He also knows where in the raw database it will be, and he can request only the essential data to be bulk processed offline. This inherently will reduce the amount of bulk data processing required to produce a prescribed data product. A number of types of science observations can be accomplished just as easily by this OSL. For example, some dynamic solar processors require a quick look every so often and the data can be collected during short TDRS contacts. Other events require a continuous look for several hours to capture the entire process. TDRS has assured at least a three hour science data contact every day to enable this type of science to be conducted. The fact that the OSL orbit provides 100% continuous solar viewing is also critical to this type of science 
and the flexibility it provides greatly facilitates the use of Tidris. With OSL, the solar physics community has an unprecedented opportunity to conduct solar dynamic science on a scale well beyond anything accomplished to date or even planned for this century.